welcome to another episode of Blu-ray on a Budget. I'm Jerry, this is Johnny. We're here to talk about the 1994 film, The Crow. Now, if you don't know, now you know. The Crow can be bought pretty much anywhere. It's sometimes, if you go to Target, it's like yeah. $4.75. You get a Blu-ray, you get digital copy, crack it open. See there? That's, that's all you're getting. You do get a ton of special features. Um, you have director Alex Proyas uh, does the commentary. You have behind the scenes featurettes, uh, profile of James O'Barr, extended scenes, deleted footage montage, uh, original poster concepts, storyboards, and theatrical trailer. That's what you're getting. But it is a 1080p high definition. Uh, this is probably the most beautiful way to watch this film. So this is the way I'm going to recommend that if you can get a hold of it, you should get a hold of it. Now, when we were growing up, um, we're in that age range where we were, uh, we were in high school. You were in high school. I was in high school. I was almost in high school. You were like in junior high, same yeah. shit. Uh, no, no maturity level yeah. difference. Um, so growing up with this movie, uh, unfortunately, it's, it, this is a hard film to talk about because Brandon Lee died to make this film. Right. So that was always like the big thing with it was like, it, it always had that, I, I don't know if it was like mystery behind it or what it was just always that like that was the one movie that yeah well that I knew I don't know prior to that what other movies were uh, actors and crew may have died shooting but this is the first one that I I was alive for that yeah Brandon Lee died on the set of this movie and it's the thing is is that the movie um, is essentially about uh, a wicked angel almost like a wraith that's coming back from the right, dead for exactly, revenge yeah. And that's why, because of the creepiness of this movie, I mean, it's a very creepy movie. Mm. Um, it's a hybrid movie. It definitely has a lot of genres just mixed into it to make, well, I, it's one of my favorite movies. It's, so, yeah, it's it de definitely one of my favorite movies. It's but, top five. It, yeah, le but like we were saying, it definitely, it definitely takes from specific genres and creates this like masterpiece of just how you should mix genres in a movie so yeah and the the movie comes from place of pain um johnny actually has his copy here of the crow by james o'barr this is not the original 80s one but there's the one that my parents bought me i think in like 93 or 94 when the movie actually did come out yeah so pretty and cool james o'barr um his girlfriend was raped and, right uh you know the whole impetus of the crow was it it you can see where obar was coming from when he when he wrote the comic but a lot of it is based on uh like original native american like folklore where yeah. the crow was was uh, like a, I, I don't know if it, ca it carries it carries yeah, the soul soul between the living and the dead so. yeah and that's what Obar adapted that to the story that he uses for the crow. So it's a tale of vengeance, and I think that after the tragedy that had happened in James Obar's life uh, with his girlfriend, this was a way for him to, I guess, vent the pain. Right, right. And he really bled into this. And then what's even sadder is that this film is amazing, and you have this. This is a star-making performance. Mm -hmm. Like, anybody who saw this, Brandon Lee was always going to live in the shadow of his father uh, up until this film. Right. Before this, he had done Rapid Fire, Showdown in Little Tokyo. And I enjoy those films because yeah. I, I enjoy a good martial arts movie, but he would still be in the shadow. This was breaking the mold. There weren't superhero films. There was Batman before this. Right. That was really about it. And I think, um, you know, Batman for, uh, excuse me, Batman Returns. But there really were no superhero movies. And this was a comic book movie, which right. there weren't many of. And it, it was one of those things, like, if you grew up in the 90s, like, the soundtrack is amazing. Yeah, it was definitely one of the first soundtracks I remember actually buying for a movie. I was never really into the whole music end of the movie thing, but uh, it was one of the first soundtracks I actually bought. What was your favorite song on that soundtrack? You know what it is? And I don't know if it's just because of the editing that was involved when they placed this song with when it's I'm all right I'm gonna cut to it it's it's the cures burn Ooh. when Brandon Lee first puts on the makeup and there's that shot in the mirror and just the sound of the crow comes up and then the song starts it's just it's perfect it's powerful I'm getting goosebumps right now just Me thinking too. about it it's it's 
it just really sticks with you. Like when I hear that song burn, all I do is think of this movie. So it, it, it's so powerful. Um, that's probably one of my favorite songs. Um, one of my other favorite songs, Stone Temple Pilots. Um, oh yeah. Big Empty, right? Yeah, Big Empty. And then of course the, 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 the one song that just, I can't listen to it. it. It can't rain all the time. Oh yeah. Is that Jane Syberry? Yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah and, and she, that song is just, I mean, if you want to have a good cry, Jesus Christ. And this entire movie is, you know, he died. It's very simple. Let's just clear up some things because right. if you're new to this, I'm just going to make it very simple. There were two gunsmiths and a gunsmith is someone on the set who handles all the firearms. They were shooting this on the cheap. Uh, it was a Miramax film. Dino De Laurentiis was producing it and they were trying to cut corners where they could. That was their first mistake. So the gunsmith that was working on the project, um, had to go work on something else and they brought on another guy and he was working with the same firearms that the first gunsmith had done so they had a 44 magnum and basically a blank had misfired and blanks have gunpowder in them they do you know because you're getting a flash from the muzzle the whole deal um it was basically lodged inside of the barrel was plastic and all the other Whatever shit. Whatever they used to pack the, the blank bullet, right? Yep. So what happened was the actor who plays Funboy, and mm -hmm. I've read it really, the guy who played Funboy, I don't remember the actor's name, yeah. it really fucked him Messed up. Messed him up, yeah. Bad. Like he didn't act, he didn't, even Alex Proyas, the director, didn't do anything until Dark City, which was years later. It, it, this fucked everybody up. Like it, but anyway, um, the second gunsmith did not know, and he should have known because when you're dealing with firearms, he should have checked the barrel. Mm. Uh, it was a scene where Brandon Lee was walking into an apartment, uh, obviously, and finds his girlfriend being tortured right. and raped. And uh, the projectile was enough to fire out from the second blank, and it went through and basically was like uh, almost kind of like a buckshot. Like buck yeah. And it just tore him apart inside, and he basically bled to death. Um, you know, over the course of 12 hours and it, it, the movie was almost done mm -hmm. this was one of the first movies where they used you know recently with Furious 7 right. they used CGI to um, help and that technology is so far ahead of where it was in yeah. 94 you can still see the spots in this movie where they did it so but it, this movie is not only just a wonderful movie it's a loving tribute mm -hmm. to its star and, right, right. and it's there's been sequels which we'll talk about another time mm -hmm. But nothing can touch this. Yeah. Especially like now, it's. I remember seeing it in the 90s, and yeah, I. You know what? You were like a weird kid if you were like really into The Crow or you loved The Crow. But now it seems like it's become pretty mainstream where the amount of merchandise it could put out, so. Yeah, it, it almost feels like they. In some ways, it, it cheapened it. Okay, like with Nightmare Before Christmas, because it's a very special film to me. Right. You know, um. It, it it was a slow burn and you kind of have the thing like are they cashing in on the visage of Brandon Lee uh, you know because it's one of those things like you know the old saying in, in journalism if it bleeds it leads right. and, and I think like it, it made him kind of this goth version of James Dean I think Dean. That's, that's what it is it's just it's so much more than just how like someone who's really into like gothic culture perceives it it's 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 a love story that's what it is it's ultimately like a love story a bar wrote it for a reason the, the movie is a love story like he's doing this to obviously avenge his uh wife yeah but you know what it's it's his love for her that's allowing him to come back and do these things so and then the the real tragedy too is is that brandon lee was going to get married after they were right done shooting this film so they dedicated the film to him and his wife B. I mean, all of it, it's, it, look, there is no supernatural, there's no curse, there's no nothing. It's just misfortune, it's tragedy, it's ultimately just coincidence. We can't, you know, chalk this up to saying, like, it was a curse that was on Bruce right. Lee. Or, it, it just, it's a series of unfortunate events that do have link, but because of the subject matter, that's why it, it, it touches home. Mm -hmm. I, I saw this film opening day twice. Nice. Uh, I cut school. Uh, that's why we're doing Blu-ray on a budget, and we're not working at yeah, right. uh, Paramount Pictures. Um, cut school twice. No, I didn't cut school. In I, the same I, day, I cut school I, twice. I cut school twice the same day. I cut school 
saw the film, saw the, the matinee, and then went back again at night. And I really have to say that it was the first viewing in theaters was like going to a wake. Yeah. The second viewing was much rowdier and a celebration. And I really wouldn't have it any other way. But it was very strange because you could say that kids or whatever, maybe it's our generation, maybe it's not. But even though it was a rowdier crowd at night, there was a level of respect right. that we were here to see this, this, you know, the movie really is a love letter to James O'Barr's work and it's mm -hmm. a love letter to Brandon. And I think that honestly, it's a better movie because of his death. Because from what I understand, Alex Proyas said, you know, I have to make good on this. And mm -hmm. his way of making good was to make us love Brandon. Right. And I think some of those shots that you can see that go still, or it's very obvious that right. those were love letters. And yeah. you know, it's his legacy. That's what it is. Yeah. So The Crow is an excellent film. I mean, we can't recommend it. I mean, I can't recommend it, uh, Johnny. I would buy this movie if it was a hundred dollars. Like, yeah, it's it's just one of those movies that like you have those certain movies growing up that really touch you, whatever. Like, kind of like affect you. Like, this is this is mine. So yeah, it, it de definitely it's burned in my memory. The soundtrack, the events, the, the entire as a package, everything. Um, you even have it tattooed I, on your wrist. I do have a camera all the time on my wrist tattooed. Just because it's one of those things where, like, no matter how bad life can be, like, it can't rain all the time, so. It can't, and, and you, you know, I mean, if you're out there and you're watching this, you know, if you're going through something or you have problems and you, you really think that you're at the end of your rope, it, it can't rain all the time. You, you know, there will be days, there'll be better days, there'll be sunny days, and you should never give up. You know, you should never back down to anybody. You should always stand up for what you believe in. It's important. But the message of the film is that the most important thing in this world is love. Right. And there is one thing that we do love a lot. Yeah. Okay. We're getting to it because this is the moment you've been waiting for. We are about to unbox the Sideshow Hot Toys slash Sideshow Eric Draven, the Crow figure. We haven't seen this yet, so... Yeah, I've seen pictures of right. it online, but this is ours. We're going to get to hold it and touch it and play with it. So, are you ready? All right. This is uh, what we've been waiting for. This is going to be really awesome. From our friend Jeremy at Blam Entertainment. We buy all of our toys from there. This is it. You can see this is the box. It's Hot Toys, Sideshow. Ooh, Eric Draven, the crow. From 90210. Another tattoo Johnny has. Yeah. So we're gonna use the Karama bit knife. We're gonna cut the sides of this really gently as we can. Oh God. I feel like I went too deep with that one. <laughs> I'm like, you know, the uh, first cut is the deepest. It's true. It's true. That was Cheryl Crow, right? I think it was Pesh Mode first. Oh no, it was Cat Stevens. My bad. Sorry. Okay, we didn't injure the box. Oh my God, dude! I, I was so close to tragedy here. All right, Johnny, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm showing it to Johnny, I mean, we wouldn't care about Amazing. you. Amazing. Holy shit. Yeah, movie masterpiece. There you go, kids. You can see that, beautiful. This is just- It's awesome, because it's like the one sheet, and on the back it actually has like, the for the for the masterpiece series of this toy, it actually has it run down like it would be a credit roll. Yeah, all all the sculptors, cool. yeah. And if you touch it, it it's it's textured. Oh, yeah, okay. It's textured like feathers. Nice. Um, Eric Draven, one one sixth scale figure. You can see the top of the box right there. The rest is black, just like you said. It's on the back of the box. It's just a credit roll of all the gentlemen and ladies who put it together. Um. This is going to be a simple one because now we've learned how hot yeah. toys work. Uh, it's kind of like a big gift box. It's the most wonderful gift you can give. Oh, you've got nothing in there except darkness. Okay, this is incredibly badass. This is straight, straight out of the movie a scene. Yeah, I think I just got a boner. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was, I'm like welling up a little right yeah. now. It's kind of really... You, 
you can see that this is obviously, if you know the crow, this is him looking through the window. And this is, yeah, exactly. It's oh. great, the first scene where he comes as the crow and he jumps through the window, so it's... I'm gonna take this out, so you can see that. That's the actual window. And then on the inside, the, uh, it's, it's red. You can see, it's just like, just like moving. Uh, everything, everything is just, this is, oh my God. We're gonna have to take this off because there's no way that we could show you guys at home. Um, yeah, we gotta take him out. He comes with a guitar. He actually has his guitar. Am I doing this wrong? I think the mole. Yeah, this side. This side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting it. All right. If you want to take yeah. out take out the bass and show them the bass, it's pretty wicked. I'm trying to do this the best we can, kids. That is just gorgeous. My God. Apparently Man. I can't open toys. Oh, so we got a base that has Crow Eric Draven. Has uh, a piece so it sits around his back so it's not just sitting with those usual like little nipples that go up into the feet. So pretty well supported. We are doing our best here to um, the most important thing, I guess, is the crow itself. I'm trying to take him out here. Open this. We've, think there's something. we've learned how to manipulate hot toys. Okay, he's out. Um, Jesus Christ. Wow. It's like almost creepy how realistic the face is. It's Look insane. At, you can see the bullet holes. Oh, yeah. and so that was like pants. another thing from the movie is that throughout the movie his clothes were getting more damaged through all the fights he's been in and they actually included all the detail on this. You, we're gonna give you close-ups and all the wonderful shots. And if, you're, if you wanna hold it, the, the leather is... Ah, oh, it's not It's real leather. It's, it's like... It's crazy. Taking little, little accessories. He doesn't come with much, but he doesn't need much. He's got his crow, and the crow can fly around. See? The crow sees everything. He has the wedding ring. Oh my god, he's got the wedding ring around yeah. his neck? Oh my god. Yeah, crazy. This is the guitar. Obviously, if you've seen the film, you know this is really the guitar. It's yeah. An inc there's real strings on this guitar. A leather strap, even. Oh, wow. Nice. This is absolutely beautiful. I don't know what those are. I don't know either. That's bizarre. We might have to look into that one, so. Yeah, something in there. I th actually, I don't know, maybe it's the pose. Uh, it comes with four different uh, hands, sets yeah. of hands, obviously, for different things. Um, one thing I noticed with this figure, what, what, there's no weapons. You're right. And I think that might be on purpose because, unfortunately, Brandon Lee did die at the hands of a gun. Whether it was a real blank or not, he died. Um, so there are no guns in here. There are no knives in here. And if you've seen the film, he uses just about every, <laughs> every yeah. implement of destruction right. to, to basically make sure that the bad guys pay. But it's very unique that they did not put weapons yeah. in here. I guess maybe because, if you remember from the movie too, it wasn't like he came fully armed. Whatever was in the environment at the time where he was finding whoever he, whoever he was going to kill, he pro he pretty much just worked with they had there, so. Well, that was that was the thing too, is was that um, in The Crow, you know, Eric Draven is not a martial arts master. He's right. not, he's just a guy who has a lot of rage. And he, that is how he brings his vengeance down upon the people who murdered him and his wife. Um, so, what do you think of this figure? I think it's amazing. Um, definitely gonna be part of my collection. Um, the face is just, it's insane. It's spot on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's so, Brandon Lee. Yeah. Um, you can order this at Blam Entertainment. Follow the link below. This is, uh, and again, I, I always see, like I said this with the Commando figure, but I gotta say it again, like, if you're gonna own one Brandon Lee Crow figure, this is it. You need, you buy this, and you don't have to buy anything else right. ever again. You're done. Um, 
for Crow fanboys, you're gonna need this because it's, it's yeah. Attention to details is insane. Like the actually okay, the most not only is the ring around the neck just yeah. an amazing touch, but the most amazing part of this figure is the translucent quality of the makeup, makeup on he the uses face, yeah. on the face. Yeah. This is Brandon Lee. Yeah. I mean, this there's no like. It's not like you're going to look at this figure and say, "Oh, it's you know, it's the J this is Brandon Lee." Yeah. Um, and I have to say that, you know, it, it sounds weird, but this is a wonderful tribute to him. Right. And uh, uh, you know, this is the character he'll always be remembered for. Um, they've tried remaking the Crow, reimagining the Crow. There's been many sequels. sequels. I think again, they just dropped it again this year from trying to be remade. In the last in the last three years, everybody from Bradley Cooper. Tom Hiddleston, Luke Evans, Luke Evans was the last one, I think. Luke Evans was the last one, but like it's like every year. I mean, the most interesting script that I I read was the, the Rob Zombie Crow 2032. Right. Okay. And that was cool because it was like they lived in these cities in the sky, mm -hmm. and it was way into the future. It was more of a Blade Runner kind of a feel. The whole problem with these sequels is that they try to just recreate what they did originally like it's always a guy losing a girl it's 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 always along those lines it's not like they're trying there are other comics where there are different stories oh, yeah. so it's like yeah. they could easily have adapted any of those but they always go to that same like that same original foundation where it has to be a guy black with, trench coat yeah long hair so it's like it's it just you know it's one of those things like we talk about signature roles that you know there's only one person who can right. play a role and for better or worse, he had to die to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Brandon Lee is Eric Draven, and there'll never be another Eric Draven. Like, I, I really don't care. Like, it's one of those things. Like, it, it's the guy died to make right. this movie for you. So, you should at least show some respect. And I think they should leave the Crow franchise alone. I mean, there are, again, we both have read the comics throughout the years. Right. And there's been female crows. Right. There's been Native American crows. Asian, yeah. You know, so it's, it's so many, so many ways. It's been, it's been redone. And and that tale, uh, the, the the themes of love, loss, and revenge. Right. Uh, you know, it's just like in literature. You know, like Shakespeare said, there's there's five dominant themes. There's really not many. Um, and that's the thing is that the crow really is kind of a Shakespearean tale. Right. It, it really, uh, it takes place in Detroit on Devil's Night. But I think that's why The Crow lives on as a movie, as a franchise, as a comic book, is because those themes are so strong. Um, and I think at, at the end of the day, you know, like, you know, people want to believe in angels and, and people want to believe in love. And um, I really just have to say, in closing, um, you know, my, my, my deepest... Uh, Condolences to Linda Lee Cadwell and, and Shannon Lee, uh, and the entire family, and um, you know we hope that Brandon Lee just rests in peace and uh, people remember him um, for this film because the happiness that he brought us, right. we owe him. So, just gonna take a moment of silence, and uh, we'll see you next time on Blu-ray on a budget. Thank you.